Hello and welcome to Glacier High School's virtual Veterans Day ceremony. My name is Bo Wright and I am with the Social Studies Department here at Glacier High School. 102 years ago, on November 11th, 1918, hostilities came to an end across Europe, marking the end of World War I. From this humble beginning, America has been honoring veterans of our armed services. This marks the third anniversary of Glacier High School's Veterans Day ceremony, where we pause to take a day to honor the veterans of our community here in Kalispell, Montana. Today you will hear from a number of veterans, including members of the Glacier High School staff and faculty, as well as community members, who are also veterans from our armed services. We will conclude today by giving you the opportunity to thank a veteran, where we will be writing short postcards thanking veterans for their service, including the 1-189th General Support Aviation Battalion from the Montana National Guard, who recently returned from their mission in the Middle East, including Kuwait, Iraq, and Syria. Thank you for your time and attention during this ceremony, and also thank you veterans. And now, please stand for the singing of our national anthem performed by the Echoes Elite Performing Choir of Glacier High School. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I say your name. I say your name. You solemnly swear. You solemnly swear. To support and defend. Support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. And to bear true faith. And bear true faith. And allegiance to the same. And allegiance to the same. Then I will obey. I will obey. The orders of. The orders of. The President of the United States. The President of the United States. And the orders of. And the orders of. Those officers, Those officers appointed over me, appointed over me according, to regulations, according to regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. The Uniform Code of Military Justice. So, help me God. so help me God. We celebrate Veterans Day on the anniversary of 
the armistice that ended World War I, the armistice that began on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. The timing of this holiday is quite deliberate in terms of historical fact, but somehow it always seems quite fitting to me that this day comes deep in autumn when the colors are muted and the days seem to invite contemplation. It is, in a way, an odd thing to honor those who died in defense of our country, in defense of us, in wars far away. The imagination plays a trick. We see these soldiers in our mind as old and wise, but most of them were boys when they died, and they gave up two lives, the one they were living and the one they would have lived. When they died, they gave up their chance to be husbands and fathers and grandfathers. They gave up their chance to be revered old men. They gave up everything for our country, for us. And all we can do is remember. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. In memory of those who gave the last full measure of devotion, may our efforts to achieve lasting peace gain strength. Let us make a vow to our dead. Let us show them by our actions that we understand what they died for. Strengthened by their courage, heartened by their value, and borne by their memory, let us continue to stand for the ideals for which they lived and died. In the long history of the world, only a few generations have been granted the role of defending freedom in its hour of maximum danger. I do not shrink from this responsibility. I welcome it. I do not believe that any of us would exchange places with any other people or any other generation. The energy, the faith, the devotion which we bring to this endeavor will light our country and all who serve it. We shall pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, oppose any foe to assure the survival and the success of liberty. Well, my name is Darren Schwartz. I'm a chaplain with the Montana Army National Guard, rank of major. I've been with the Guard for about four years now, but uh, previous almost 10 years with the Reserve. So I've been in, the, been in the Army as a chaplain for almost 14 years. My name is Staff Sergeant Jacqueline Hewitt. I'm a readiness NCO for 639th here in Kalispell. I've been in the Army for 22 years, and I've deployed to both Iraq and Afghanistan. Hi there, my name's Brian Zip. I was in the United States Army for almost 21 years. I served in the uh, Iraq War and the Afghanistan War. My name is Master Sergeant Ryan Keeler, retired. Served in the United States Marine Corps for 21 years. Deployed to the first Gulf War, Somalia, OIF-1, OIF-2. And now I'm here in the great state of Montana. Master Sergeant Farron Spivey, I've been serving in the Montana Army National Guard for about 32 years. And and I've served in Afghanistan twice, and I uh, should be on my last year until uh, I retire from the Montana Guard. I'm Captain Sean Williams. I've been serving in the Montana National Guard for about nine years. I've been on one deployment to Afghanistan. I am Colonel Lee Fretwell, retired U.S. Army. I deployed to um, Panama, Desert Storm, and Afghanistan. Hi, my name is Michael Noyce Marino. I've been in the Army for about 20 years. I've deployed to Afghanistan once and Iraq twice. 
Hi, my name is Kevin Hansen. Uh, I've been in the Army for 17 years. I've deployed to Iraq once and Afghanistan twice. Hi, I'm Carrie Williams. I served in the United States Marine Corps for four years. Hi, I'm Chris Kusker. I retired as a major from the Army National Guard. Um, I was stationed in Germany for two years. I served in Iraq in OIF 2 and I also served in Afghanistan. Um, I was in for a total of 22 years. Mr. Johnson, I served in the United States Army. Uh, I did my initial training in Oklahoma and subsequently served in Kentucky and then on Fliegerhorst Kasern in Germany uh, right at the very end of the Cold War. Thanks. My name is Thomas Conover and I served in the United States Navy from 1980 to 1983 and I was on board the USS Enterprise and I was a jet mechanic while I was on board. Served in the United States Coast Guard, mainly down along the California coast, Washington, all through there. I served about seven years before I was put out on retirement. Thank you for your service. 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 Hey Glacier, this is Sophia Smith, GHS class of 2020, and current midshipman of the United States Naval Academy. There's a long tradition of Glacier graduates electing to serve in our nation's armed forces. But on Veterans Day, we honor their sacrifices and everything they do for our country. Please join me in welcoming our keynote speaker, Captain Mike Langer, United States Navy retired, and former midshipman at United States Naval Academy. Go Navy, beat Army. God would never be cruel enough to create a cyclone as terrible as the Argonne battle. Only man would ever think of doing an awful thing like that. Sergeant Alvin York, Argonne Forest Medal of Honor recipient. Veterans Day honors those who have served our country in war or peace. They can be living or deceased, although this event is largely intended to thank living veterans for their sacrifices. It was originally called Armistice Day to commemorate the ending of the First World War, also known as the Great War or the War to End All Wars. On this special day, we celebrate and honor our veterans for their patriotism, love of country, and willingness to serve and sacrifice for the common good. I'm going to share the story of one Montana veteran who exemplifies what we are honoring today. At age 18 in 1904, George Davidson emigrated from Scotland to help his older brother ranch in eastern Montana. After processing through the port of Ellis Island, New York, he arrived in Montana by train. In 1908, he established his own homestead after attaining U.S. citizenship at age 22. Nine years later, at age 31, with the U.S. entry into the Great War, he and over 27,000 Montana men were drafted into the Army. George was made a sergeant in Company K, 362nd Infantry, often referred to as the Montana Regiment of the Wild West 91st Division. After basic training at newly constructed Fort Lewis, Washington, these men were transported 7,000 miles to France, where they were destined to fight alongside our allies in the massive war-ending Meuse-Argonne Offensive. That night, all hell was turned loose, is the simple entry in Sergeant Davidson's diary, describing the horrific early morning opening barrage on 26 September 1918. This now obscure American commitment was a key part of the final Allied offensive against the Germans. It helped force an end to the war and was fought a total of 47 days from 26 September to 11 November 1918 when the armistice was signed. The Meuse-Argonne campaign was the largest in United States military history involving 1.2 million American soldiers. It was also among the deadliest, resulting in over 350,000 casualties, including over 26,000 American lives. The 1918 Spanish flu pandemic made matters worse. The post-war regimental history by the 362nd Association 
enlist Sergeant Davidson as one of their soldiers who paid the supreme price. He was listed killed in action 29 September 1918 at age 32. The short narrative indicates he was about four yards ahead of Corporal Millard leading his men against the enemy when he was wounded but kept steadily on until he was killed by machine gun fire. Similar war news reached Montana in December with date of death 21 October. A notice in the Forsyth Independent newspaper read, during his nine months service in France, he gave his country the best he had to give and then his life. The truth of the matter is that Sergeant Davidson was not killed in action. Instead, he received a serious lung wound on 29 September, found cover in a German foxhole, and was taken prisoner the next day when the 362nd was ordered to pull back. His captors relocated him to a lice-ridden POW camp on the Russian border. As the German war effort unraveled in the following months, he and a fellow prisoner escaped, making their way to London, England, where he was hospitalized in very poor condition. Sergeant Davidson arrived in London wearing only wooden shoes and an odd assortment of filthy, tattered clothing. One can imagine his Scottish aunt's shock in late January 1919 when she received a letter from her nephew on Red Cross stationery saying that he was well and expected to travel back to Montana soon. George did indeed arrive in Rosebud, Montana in February after being honorably discharged from the Army. It took some time and effort to set the record straight that he was in fact still alive. After the war, George built a successful sheep and cattle ranching operation of his own and developed a reputation as an honest, forthright, and kind person. He did not drink alcohol, but did manage to smoke camels, even with only one lung. Hobbies included playing the harmonica, tinkering with his Ford pickup truck, listening to boxing on the radio, and playing pool. George Davidson rarely spoke much about his war experience, which is typical of many combat veterans. His wife said that every September 29th, he spoke of the dismal rainy day near the, near the Argonne Forest when he lost his right lung. He indicated that while lying in the cold, wet foxhole, little pink bubbles formed around the wound with each breath he took. Because he spoke little of his service, the full story only came to life from examination of his diary and historical documents found after his passing in 1977 at age 90. Sergeant Davidson represents millions of American heroes who love their country and are willing to serve and sacrifice for the common good. His is one story amongst many accounts of uncommon valor where the hero returned home from the battlefield to lead a life of unassuming self-reliance. The Forsyth Independent published a moving tribute to this veteran when a reporter wrote, I went to George Davidson's funeral the other day, as did most of Southeast Montana. The beautiful ceremony was a fitting tribute to a man whose life we may never see again. Why did I select this story of a rancher from Eastern Montana for today's message? Because I know with certainty that this veteran's service to his country epitomizes Veterans Day. For you see, Sergeant Davidson is my grandfather. To my grandfather and all fellow veterans that have served our great nation, I salute you. Thank you. I wanted to thank everyone who participated in the making of this honorary video and tribute to our veterans. Although we weren't able to do an assembly presentation this year, it doesn't minimize the significance of your service for America. Here at Glacier, we take great pride in those individuals who serve and have served to protect our freedom, and we want to say thank you for your sacrifice. Along with our efforts to acknowledge those veterans, I'm truly excited to announce today and let you all know that Glacier High School has just been approved as one of the first honorary schools in Montana to be designated by the Office of Public Instruction as a Montana Purple Star School. What that means is that Glacier has not only proven to take steps to honor veterans and servicemen, but those military students and families of servicemen and veterans who attend Glacier will receive the STAR treatment as well. As many of you may know, military families often move every two to three years, and this can cause a lot of stress between making new friends and blending into different cultures and activities environments while trying to work through the different school curricular classes that differ from school to school. Here at Glacier, we acknowledge those challenges and we will be here to work 
with our military families, supporting and serving you with the great pride and commitment that you have served us. So thank you again for your service, and it will be a great privilege to serve as a Purple Star School for our military families and students. God bless America. Just a cup of coffee, please. Coming right up. Oh, there's no charge. Thank you. Here you go. Thanks again. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your support. Can I take a picture? Sure. All right. Smile. There you go. Sir? My son would like to ask you a question. Are you a hero too? said you were. I just served as best I could. Can we take a picture? Sure. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your support. Can I get you a refill? 